This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Mnow Biscuits. Ten million Kina as first installment for Kikori Hospital. Telecom Limited opened state-of-the-art reception. And joint efforts to promote ocean cleanliness. Good evening, you're watching National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. Local member for Kikori Soroy AOA presented a dummy check of 10 million kina this morning as the first installment towards the building of a brand new 40 million kina Kikori District Hospital. Kikori Hospital is run down and in poor state with its buildings near collapse. Kikori Hospital is a run-down hospital in Gulf Province. Under the management of Gulf Christian Services, the extension of health services of this hospital goes as far as Kapuna Hospital. Today, a much-needed injection from the local MP, Soroi Eoi. 10 million kina is part of overall funding of up to 40 million kina, which is still coming. So 10 million is the first batch of that money. And this is uh, in compliance of uh, our government policy to develop and build uh, district hospitals throughout Papua New Guinea. District hospitals are important because that's where our people are. Majority of our people are, most of our people are. Hikori Hospital serves an urban population of 15 to 20,000 and a rural population of 50,000 to 100,000 across Gulf Province and up to the Southern Highlands and across the Western Province. And the local member hopes that when completed, the new district hospital will have the much needed requirements. To ensure that we are accountable and transparent in terms of disbursement of government funds to institutions that uh, are important in the district. And uh, so this, this particular hospital will hopefully contain all the important requirements of the hospitals. And uh, Sister Kaipu would, uh, would know what to do, uh, what is the requirement of hospitals. So you're looking at uh, one of the important things uh, uh, Sister Kaibu, I want to also stress is to have a proper morgue uh, organized because that's an important concern for our people. TB is a major issue in Kikori, along with trauma injuries suffered from crocodile attacks. This was revealed by Sister Sarah Kaipu, the deputy manager for the Kikori Hospital. She was also pleased with the timely funds from the member in carrying out his duty. We are doing, and with this 10 million kina coming in, it's a really big boost. Um, just recently, we were, Kikori Hospital it, it has been given a district hospital status. So the hospital is now moving up to level four in the government health uh, uh, structure. And so in order to run a facility that's up to level four, we need to change, we need to upgrade. Um, and we didn't need, need a new hospital, and with the level four facility, we have now given, been given a new structure of 127 positions for the hospital. So we're going to need specialists, specialist nurses, specialist doctors, and so if we are going to have these people, we don't have a housing for them, so we can recruit them, and we've been advised by Christian Health Services, uh, PNG, that is the, the umbrella we come under, um, to recruit. The Kikori District Hospital has been elevated to a level 4 district hospital and the local member of parliament hopes that the building will be concluded within his term of parliament. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. Telecom Limited has launched the opening of the newly refurbished reception, state-of-the-art boardroom and media room yesterday at the Telecom Romana building in Port Mosby. Present to officiate the ceremony was state-owned enterprise minister William Duma, chairman of Telecom Limited board Cedric Rondoke and Telecom Limited CEO Amos Tepe.
A transformational journey has been witnessed yesterday by all at the Telecom Rumana office in Port Mosby. All Telecom Limited staff came in their new corporate attire, which was officially launched too. Three official openings were made by State Enterprises Minister William Duma. The first one was for the renovated state-of-the-art reception. State Enterprises Minister William Duma did the honours of unveiling the plaque that was erected after him and the Prime Minister James Marape. Following that was the ribbon cutting of both the boardroom and the media room. Telecom Limited CEO Amos Tepe gave a scope for the concept behind this project. Over time, we have realized the need for more spaces, area to house both internal and external clients walking in, and more important, it's about comfortable environment or sitting area. State-owned enterprises Minister William Duma has encouraged the company to work hard and push greater things to achieve in the coming years. You've done the right thing, and that means you need to do more. Just because you refurbished the reception area, created an extra space for the media and a new boardroom for your directors, is not enough. All of you have to do the right thing. You have the key. You are the key to the future of this company. Kumul Consolidated Holdings Managing Director, Professor David Kavanamur, congratulated Telecom. Telecom is a company that permeates the country. It's uh, felt throughout the country through, uh, through media, through data, through voice, and through uh, the more recent electronic digitalization of communication. It's a, it's a company that uh, epitomizes Papua New Guinea moving towards the modernization of communication technology. Chairman for Telecom Limited Board Cedric Rondoke, when sharing his sentiments on the revamp of the three looks, expressed that the accomplishments of the telecommunications company has never been an easy one as challenges were faced with. He furthermore said B-Mobile Telecom Medge was one of them. I can assure everyone that it has never been an easy job trying to merge telecom and B-Mobile. Being there, We've had several meetings. We've tried to bring both parties together. And I tell you, it was like a war path. And we couldn't get it done. But thank you to the former chairman, Director Johnson, who made it possible with all the directors who were present at that time. We made the merger. Meanwhile, Telecom Limited CEO Amos Tepe has highlighted the achievements of Telecom Limited yesterday at the ceremony held at the Telecom Rumana building in Port Mosby. At the event yesterday, it has been 29 years since the facilities of Telecom Rumana building has seen renovation and a complete facelift. Being a 100% nationally owned entity, Telecom CEO Amos Tepe was pleased to announce the company's achievements. The first one being the extensive reviews of Telecom's business strategy, vision, mission and values for the short to long term period. This review extends from the government agenda to match both Telecom PNG and B-Mobile into one consolidated entity, Telecom Limited, which have been successfully implemented in 20. 21. The measure has led to the development of telecom first ever three-year corporate plan, including our network modernized plan, also known as the network master plan. 
A number of initiatives were introduced in the company which aimed to improve quality and productivity. CEO Tepi has alluded that culture is one of the key aspects that they are seriously looking into. These are the achievements. ISO 9000 2015, a certificate in terms of quality management and working towards achieving ISO 27001 certification in terms of information cyber security. First in the SOA group to implement time-based payrolls based entirely on the biometric facial recognition software. This has greatly improved time management, functionality, and reduced staff costs for the organization. CEO Tepi furthermore added that these changes signify the coming of a new age for Telecom Limited. President of the Farmers and Settlers Association, Wilson Thompson, is calling on government to change its focus and start creating employment opportunities for the 60,000 persons graduating from tertiary institutions every year. Thompson highlighted the importance of government and business support to create a job opportunities. The government is not going to create employment. The public services are free on recruitment, so only the private sector can employ. And for example, like Lake Biscuit, they employ about 2,000 uh, workers. So you look at mainland, three or 4,000. You look at uh, New Britain, Palm oil. There's about 25 or 30,000. He suggests that on putting a stop to increasing the education and training spaces, but to identify what training needs to be provided for its industry so that graduates fit into the workforce and others into self-employment. This sentiment was also shared by the Higher Education Minister, Don Polier. As responsible minister, what I'm doing is I'm looking at how do I improve the skills of Papua New Guineans with employment, but the employability of these Papua New Guineans is very, very important. If they're not skilled, it's very difficult for them to get a job. Even though we have the population here and we will still cry, we want employment, employment, but if we don't train our Papua New Guineans young people to be employed in the gas industry, in the mining sector, in agriculture, in the construction industry, in all the other areas, then you will find em employment will continue to be a problem because the skill we have not produced yet. On the issue of increasing unemployment, Polia commented. You know, that was the advice that was given to some of us when we were the prime minister at that time, when we get money to put elsewhere, not to create employment. Buying shares in other companies could not provide an employment. That would destroy employment. We just said that. Mr. Acting Speaker, you look at something that's answered in the parliament here. I was on the other side as a leader of the opposition, and I used to give that advice. I was also a treasurer too. And I said, look, if we get such money, 3.1 billion Kina, and that is almost 90% of the development budget of Papua New Guinea at that time then. So you are just getting the development budget of Papua New Guinea to put into a speculative market. If you did that, then of course you will see the next 10 to 20 years, you will see unemployment. You will see inflation when up. You will see the foreign reserve will have challenges. You'll say cash flow situations. Why? Because Papua New Guinea is a growing economy and we need to strengthen it to mature economy. Minister Polia commanded the Mara Peroso government for prioritizing education and revealed that the higher education department is focused to train Papua New Guineans to have skills that will guarantee them employment. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. The country's border post with Indonesia is now seen as a special economic zone, says the Prime Minister James Marape. Prime Minister Marape said the border posts in western and west Sipic provinces are important areas for trade between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. Prime Minister James Marape was responding to a question from North Fly's MP James Donald when he made those statements. The member for North Fly was asking on the plans of the national government on improving facilities in border post in his province. And you see the infrastructure there are substandard. 
When I say that is, there's no power running, no water running, no custom service, office space, staffs by staff, all get a display. Antab Longa, no trading facility. The Prime Minister answered him saying they will look at improving the border facilities and mentioned that the government is looking at a border area as a potential trading hub and not only a political boundary. Uh, we are looking at the border areas in respect to trade from a trade perspective and commerce perspective. It is, should be classified as a special uh, economic zone along the border areas on the other side of uh, the border, you have 270 million uh, Indonesians who are uh, a robust place in terms of market for our producers. PM Marape said Indonesia has always been an important trading partner and has been overlooked so many times. Indonesia on the other side is an important trading partner for so long. We've downplayed that aspect of our relationship and we've always just been seeing them from a political perspective uh, all this long. He assured the House that the Ministry of International Trade will be working with the Department of Foreign Office and Trade to address the issue in the border post areas. The Commerce uh, Industry uh, Department as well as the uh, Ministry of International Trade uh, and Foreign Affairs will work in partnership uh, and also defense to look into how best we could structure a border area. Borders are political boundaries. They separate countries, states, provinces, cities and towns. It outlines the area that a particular governing body controls. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. The member for Hiri Koyari in Central Province, Keith Iduhu, has asked all politicians to stop the blame game and start taking responsibility to bring service to the rural communities. He said this in Parliament following talks on the status of the country's economy. MP Keith Idu was making a statement in Parliament yesterday stating that politicians should not be throwing stones at each other on how to run the country. He said they should work together as their all purpose being in Parliament is to work and serve the people. In the PNC-led regime, everybody wanted to throw stones. Some of us are all in this house today. Again, in this regime, the same very people are so quick to throw stones. Mr. Idu said responsibilities on running the country should not be put only on one man. He was stressing on the importance of financing the rural economy. He said each MP should be delivering to the rural economy. Every time we talk about building the rural economy, well, how are we going to rule the, build the rural economy if we are not availing credit to our rural economy? And how can we avail credit to the rural economy if we are not availing securities to our rural economy? And how can we avail security to our rural economy if we cannot formalize the assets? He said there is a big need to look again at the structure of governance. We need a, a very close look at the structure of government. And I say that with great care. I say we need to look at the legal framework. We, are, we keep trying to play rugby league on a golf course. We keep trying to put a square pole through a round hole. Keith Idu believes that if all leaders in parliament provide for the rural economy, there will not be migration into towns and cities as people will be living back in their communities. But imagine if we are to, in, to formalize their local economy, formalize their access to credit, then everybody in the we will be doing a great justice to our people. He further stated that the economy needs the help of all leaders in parliament and it is a must they support each other and work together. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. 
Minister for Higher Education and Sports, Don Paulier, urges all government stakeholders to effectively implement government programs in order to see the 3.5% GDP growth, as outlined by the Treasurer Ian Ling Stucky on the floor of Parliament earlier this week. To Minister Polier, the International Monetary Funds have come up with some structural adjustment program that outlines that the country is growing and highlighted that if there is an argument against it, then the responsibility falls on all leaders to fully implement government's programs. You look at the performance of this government. We already have a growth of 3.5% as per our projections and it will be growing on that track. It is growing. The, AD, uh, the, the IMF need not come and tell us how to grow it. We're already growing. But if there's an argument that, well, we are not seeing it here or there, the responsible lives are all the MPs, the public service, and those that have been responsible, responsibly mandated to implement the programs of government. Polia gives an illustration on his role as the Minister for Higher Education implementing these programs. Universities and colleges with building and we're rehabilitating infrastructure for science lab, classrooms, dormitories. We have 200 million kina in partnership with ADB to implement the program. And I'm happily implementing that. Because we like to see the quality of our institutions come up so you quality good ones coming out of institutions. So we're implementing the government's policy when we have 1.56 billion in that sector. It's already at work. We're implementing it. Minister Polier classified the Public Service Division as one of the vital components to implement government's program and urges them to step up. It is the public service. All of us have a duty at our districts. That this is money we get. It's a lot of money. It's 10 million has been, but it will be 20 million for this year and oncoming years. When we talk about employment or any year economic growth, it actually lies with individual MPs and the district administration, your finance managers and everybody in, on the ground. Like in Kandep, I'm meeting with them. How do we convert that money into employability, into economic growth in Kandep and link it to the provincial, the Enga provincial development plan and link that to the medium term development strategies of the national government or with the vision 2050. So the job we have here, we already have the solutions. We have the strategies, we have the means to solve those issues, and yet we complain. We should not be complaining, we should be happy and be cheerful. At least we have a government that is putting a lot of money, but it's up to individual MPs and their public service administration to implement to achieve the intended, intended uh, the returns. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. The Assemblies of God Church has established and launched a training center for community health workers. The school dubbed the AOG CHW Training Center as the 20th Community Health Worker Training School in the country. Paul of the AOG CHW Training Center, Jason Jambui, explained that the center and its programs are amended by the National Health Department. He further explains that the training program offered is a certificate program. Recommended by National Health Department to come and assist the AOG to establish the new community health worker training school. Mr. Jambui says this training school can help to address the shortage of health workers currently experienced in Morabe province and around the country. Yeah, Okari is located next to Buimo Buimo's health center. Buimo health center experienced 30,000 patients in one year. Currently they have 6, 600, uh, sorry, 6 nurses, 6 nurses. I mean six CSW and they have five nursing officers and one uh, HO who comes around every two times a week and to save this 30,000 in a year and if you break it down to monthly and daily it's like five nurses attending to to 2,000 nurses, I mean 2,000 patients in a day. 
The Morabe Provincial Health Authority currently has a total of 865 vacancies that are yet to be filled. Amanda Ilaitia, National MTV News. In an effort to keep ocean, shoreline and beachfronts clean and rubbish free, Royal Papua Yacht Club in partnership with National Maritime Safety Authority and National Fisheries Authority conducted a cleanup at Manubada Island outside of Port Mosby today. Manubada Island is full of rubbish, which is a hazard to human beings plants and animals on the island, including marine biodiversity. Therefore, Royal Papua Yacht Club, in partnership with National Maritime Safety Authority and National Fisheries Authority, conducted a cleanup program to clean the shoreline and beachfront today. There was a good turnout with almost 200 people participating in the cleanup activity. The organizing committee, Eunice Guinness, said the initiative is to ensure our oceans are clean. And this cleanup is to educate communities on the importance of um, the ocean pollution. Um, as you can see that there's a lot of rubbish on the beach and it's affecting the marine life. Um, it's also affecting the livelihood of people along the coastal um, villages um, because the ocean, as we all know, is um, used for different purposes, for transportation, for food, for rec recreational activities. So, um, but all these are affected by pollution. On that note, a participant, William Wilson, Pacific Safety Manager, expressed gratitude of this initiative. The, uh, the ocean cleanup, you know, it's a, it's a part of our key strategy around sustainability and ESG. Um, I think it's a great initiative. Uh, it's, a, it's a good crew out here today, uh, mixed between some corporate and, and families. Uh, and yeah, we just wanted to obviously um, be a part of that. Um, and great for our workers to be here as well because it's something that we're working on uh, as an organisation and a corporate entity. It'd be great to see uh, a couple of the uh, the other um, uh, corporate houses get involved as well. But look, I think uh, the key for us here, um, especially in Port Moresby, is education, you know, getting down into the local communities. Um. The participants and organising committees strongly urged people to be mindful of their rapies when disposing them. Try to um, be considerate of the trash that you throw in the sea because um, it affects everyone around us. Um, try and reduce um, using plastic, um, practice more recycling, um, use a trash bin with a lid so the trash won't come out and fly into the, into the water. Um, take part in beach cleanups, help spread the word, yeah. This is the first cleanup. The second cleanup will be conducted in the middle of the year. Thomas Suliambari, National MTV News. Panamax Pacific PNG has introduced another quality product into its line of household brands. The Bon Aroma Blend 84 Soluble Instant Coffee was launched around the country this month. Panamax Pacific PNG Marketing Coordinator Simonta Honey explains the company is obliged to deliver quality household brands to its loyal customers. Mr. Honey says the Bonaroma Blend 84 Instant Soluble Coffee is a strong coffee product that's best consumed with coffee whitener and sugar can be added to preference. Mr. Honey says the product comes in 25, 50 and 75 grams pack. He adds the coffee product is also being retailed at a very affordable price between 3 kina and 7 kina 50. The Born Aroma now brings the Panamax line of products to 15 household items. The Born Aroma launch in Lay began with a roadshow motorcade around Lay City, then led to a coffee sampling boot and ended with live drawers. 
Customers who participated in the promotional launch walked away with free coffee giveaways worth 15,000 kina. Panamax is a global, fast-moving consumer goods distributor established in 1987 that does exports throughout New Zealand, the Pacific Islands, Indian Ocean and the Caribbean. For their branch in Ley, Panamax manufactures its own brands of Waswas and Max soaps and B29 and Cyclone washing detergents. Natasha Avoy, National, MTV News. The Indian High Commission in Port Mosby hosted Holy Festival Day today for the small Indian community. Holy Day is a festival of colors, a time which ushers the welcoming of the spring season and ends the winter blues. Historically, it holds a lot of impotence and many believe that the festival marks the celebration of good over evil. These were the scenes this afternoon. Colours were thrown out into the air, creating a colourful scene at the Indian High Commission as the Indian community symbolically ushered the spring and chasing away the winter blues by celebrating the Festival of Colours or Holly Day. There was dancing, singing, jokes and the smearing of colours as Indians and their friends came together to unwind and forget about problems, if not for a brief moment. Anurada Guru, a teacher by profession, was MC today and she spoke of the spiritual connotations of the holy festivities. We are here to celebrate the festival of colours. I want to take a moment to reflect on the significance of holy in our lives. Holy is the color of love, the color of peace, the color Indian High Commissioner to PNG, His Excellency Imbaseka Sundramuti, explained the reason for the celebration. But there is also a religious myth to that. That's a, well, there was a, a mythological character called Polika, and who got hurt uh, because of a, an event which happened, and it is used to commemorate the occasion that we lit like a bonfire. So I'm telling all this for those people who don't know, but for the Indians who already know that. Considered to be the second biggest festival after Diwali, this year the festival was celebrated earlier on March the 10th. The Indian High Commission explained why the celebration was delayed here in PNG. This occasion it happened, I would say, more than eight, eight to ten days before. Officially it was, uh, well, it was on seven or eight, but I thought let us try to gather up the people so that we have enough for it could be, and we do it on a weekend. What can be taken away from the celebration today is the gift of the colours of life. Colours of joy, colours of happiness, colours of friendship, colours of love and all other colours you want to paint your life in. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. Moving to overseas news now, the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin over war in Ukraine. The court issued arrest warrants for Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Commissioner for Children's Rights, Maria Lvova Belova. The Hague Court says they are suspected of war crimes for unlawfully deporting children and bear individual criminal responsibility. A UN report found evidence of hundreds of Ukrainian young people illegally transferred to Russia since the start of the full-scale invasion, as well as other war crimes like rape and torture. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov denied the allegations and compared the arrest warrants to toilet paper. Russia is not a signatory to the international court, so it's unlikely either will be extradited. Turkey to give green light to Finland's NATO membership bid. Finland, along with Sweden, applied to join the alliance last May. Both were held up by Turkish objections, with Mr Erdogan still refusing to support Sweden's bid. Finland has decided to push ahead alone. 
We've seen that Finland has taken authentic and concrete steps. Based on the progress that has been made in the protocol for Finland's accession to NATO, we've decided to initiate the ratification process in our parliament. I have a feeling that uh, Finnish NATO membership is not complete without uh, Sweden. We have so much common interest having uh, <clears throat> being really neighbours and uh, having the Baltic Sea area. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sport. Stay with us. Trukai Sport. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The 2017 PNG Games Champions Team Central is off to a winning start with a whopping 847,000 kina raised last night in a fundraising dinner hosted by the Central Provincial Government. The amount raised is an early warning message to other provincial sporting teams that Team Central is committed to defending the title and cup in the upcoming PNG Games. It was a night of who is who from the central province, as all roads led to the Dynasty restaurant in Port Moresby last night, as the central provincial government hosted its fundraising drive toward Team Central's preparation for the 8th PNG Games. Political firepower from Central, within and outside, also graced the fundraising drive with host Governor for Central, Rufina Pita, the member for Goilala, Kasmiro Aya, member for Hiri Koyari, Keith Idahu, along with the Kerima Open member Thomas Oppa and Moresby Northwest member Lohia Boye Samuel. Even before the night began, all 50 tables were already sold out at 10,000 kina per table. In his address to those in attendance, Central District Administrator Francis Koaba spoke of the challenge that lays ahead for Team Central. Towards my left hand side, where the amplifiers are, is the very cup that we will be defending in the forthcoming eight PNG games. Central, for that matter, has been the only province that has won this cup out of its capital. All the other provinces that have won this cup previously won it from within their own capital. And we have the greatest challenge of trying to defend this cup. Host of the evening, Central Governor Rufina Pita, in a keynote address, stated that the winning formula for Team Central at the PNG Games needs to be followed and replicated in other development areas in the province. Our youth in the provinces. So I want to extend this to say what we are doing well in sports, we can also do well, try and apply those strategies to help our youth in other Sectors, whether it's in the economic sector, and I think that is the biggest area that we should, uh, we need to help our youth in. How did we get to the top in sports? We need to use those strategies. Uh, we need to learn the lessons from how we did that to get to the top and apply it to other sectors, and especially in the income any. Uh, sector, in the economic sector, but also in other sectors. A total pledge of 347,000 kina were made by politicians, LG presidents, companies and individuals to give Team Central a winning start without even setting a foot in the sporting arena. Rocky Iso, Chukai Sports. The National Capital District Volleyball Association is two weeks into its pre-season competition. Today saw a total of 23 volleyball clubs competing at the Tarama Aquatic and Indoor Center. A total of 23 clubs consisting of 14 men's and 9 women's clubs competed today. 
The preseason will finish off its last round next weekend, which will see the top eight clubs competing in the men's division. The same final structure will be applied to the women's division, with only one team bowing out of the tournament. NCD Volleyball Association Match Committee Chairman Mayor Joang explains further. Preseason just started two weeks ago. This is our second week. Uh, we have nine teams registered for the precision competition in the women's division and 14 teams in the men's uh, division. Chairman Joang added that straight after the grand final playoffs, the NCDVA will head into its season proper competition, which should take place in two weeks' time. According to Joang, the teams currently competing mostly constitute of existing teams with only a handful of newcomers that have joined the National Capital District Volleyball Association for season 2023. Lisa Puni, Chukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. With the completion of regular rounds last weekend in the men's division, the Port Mosby Rugby League MRDC 9th tournament witnessed its top 16 playoffs today at the Santos Field 2 in the nation's capital. The day commenced with a remarkable match competed between Royals Team 2 and the Guerra Dabaris around midday today. As the day wind down, with all the top 16 outfits proving their stance in the game, the Avengers Rugby League Club, who are the defending premiers, have revamped from their results last weekend by imposing a barnstorming win in the finals today where they trashed the Double Warriors Team 2 with a runaway 46-10 final siren score. Port Mosby Rugby League MRDC 9's tournament manager, Meke Mino, explains further. One of the highlights stand out from today's games, our uh, defending cup champion, Ave Rugby League, has won their game against the Warriors team number one, 46 points to 10. And uh, that only shows that they, in the, at the start of the tournament, they, were, they wanted to defend the cup and it, they're on the road to it. Uh, hopefully they'll clear every, everyone else. Uh, it's opposition to them and they, they can claim a back-to-back -back win in the cup. The results of the other four matches in the men's division will be tallied alongside these two games to see the quarter-finals play of tomorrow, followed by the semi-finals and the grand finals in the afternoon. The cup, the bowl and the plate presentations will immediately take place right after the grand final battle tomorrow at the Santos National Football Stadium Field 2. Lisa Puni, Trukai Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. <laughs> Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Now we take a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region, Port Mosby City, cloudy with occasional showers and possible thunderstorms this evening, Popondeta, partly cloudy with few afternoon showers. In Mamasi region, Lay City, cloudy with occasional showers this evening, Vanimo, partly cloudy with few overnight showers. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengao, cloudy with frequent showers this evening and tonight, Buka mostly fine. In the Highlands region, Old Centre is cloudy with periods of thundery rain this evening. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Saturday, the 18th of March, 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Bye for now.
This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.